Hello, I am Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. I'm um, bringing you the tantalizingly titled Moon Glow. Why is it everyone's favorite color? Um, if you enjoy my videos, please do like and subscribe because it's a huge support to my little channel. Um, more about this video. So Moon Glow is this color by Daniel Smith. Doesn't come out very well, I think, in the light, but it looks like it's a turquoisey purple. What it is, is a mix of three different pigments, PG-18, PB-29 and PR-177. And it's uh, really, really fascinating. It's not even that expensive. I mean, all watercolors tend to be fairly expensive, but it's part of their series two, which is their second cheapest out of four or five series. And it is really interesting to use. This is my little page where we're gonna have a play with it and explain why I think it's really fun. So, firstly, I'm just going to do a little graduated wash of it. I'm going to try to. This is where you'll see my basic watercolour skills falling down. So if we start nice and pigmented, and then you'll just come in with a bit more water, a bit more water. Even more water. And there you go. You can see, even in this really quick wash, how it separates out. If you can't see brilliantly, what I'll do is I'll scan this page at the end and leave it up for the last 20 seconds of the video so you can really see the, the colours properly. But at the top, you can see it's really dark. Here, you can see it's got this red pigment coming through. It's also got these turquoises, blues, and then down here, it's a kind of magenta -y colour again, where, they, where they've mixed together, or a purple even. Now you can you can force some... This, so the reason for this is it's very granulating. It's got those three pigments in. So it really does um, separate out wonderfully. It's one of uh, Daniel Smith's specialties, kind of, is doing granulating pigments. And in particular, um, they, they do a lovely range of lunar colours which all have just super heavy granulation, which is a pain if you want flat colours, but if you want something to do something interesting, then this is the colour for you. Just, you don't have to, right, you can learn to control it a bit, but it will always be interesting. Whether it absolutely makes or breaks your, um, your watercolour painting is the risk, but that's also the fun. So this was wet on dry. I'm just going to do a block here of wet on wet. So you're going to drop in a, a load of pigment and let it just separate out. Do a really heavy block of pigment there. And again, you can just see how it moves around, separates into colours. The blues tend to settle at the bottom. So I've got this angled now. And what you can see is light blue colours at the top here. And these reds and magenta purples are, the, are what are sinking down and the sort of blacks are somewhere in between. Again, if it's not really obvious here, I'm going to scan it so that you can see that's that's how it tends to settle. Now, a way you can take advantage of that is if we I haven't got a block prepared for this, but if we just paint a, a flat block of this colour, I'll make it a bit bigger. So there you can see it's a uh, slightly purpley black to use purely technical terms um, now if I go in and just start to lift away a bit what should happen is you're left and if I had a bit of water as well you get left in this area with a few more of the blues and if we do it gently around the edge just gradually moving things away So again, I hope that you can see, but you've got in the area where we washed it away, it's very light. And as we go out and out, we've just left with some subtle blues on the page. And these subtle blues then lead on to the sort of darker, flatter black, still granulating, but a flatter black. And then where the water is washed all down here, we've got all the reds coming through because the reds are 
floating away with the water. And I'm just going to draw your attention back to these areas again. As it's continued to move and dry, this separation has become really clear. So we've got these light blues and these sort of pinky reds. And actually, where the pigment wasn't that dense, we've lost all the dark. Where the pigment's more dense, we've still got the dark. And then at the edges, we've got these interesting tones. So the next thing I wanted to do is compare a block of that colour. So if I do it quite dark again. So this is our moon glow. And then I'm going to do Payne's Grey, which is one of the most common sort of blacks. And it tends to have a slightly bluish tinge to my eye. Um, this is also the, my Payne's Grey is a Daniel Smith. And I've got a, a neutral tint. And this kind of has a, it's supposed to be completely neutral. This one's by Cassartes. It's not an artist grade. Well, actually, I think they call them artist grade, but it, it's certainly one of the cheaper uh, watercolour brands. This has a sort of brownie tinge to my eye as well. Maybe even a little bit of red in there. And then finally, some Jane's Grey, um, which is a, a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine and uh, it's a very very nice mix you can buy or you can make and you can see it's got a, a sort of granulating slightly cool gray color to it and these are my favorite shadow colors so that's why i'm showing you these all together um they all have sort of different qualities to them and i think moon glow is the most interesting Oh, although it does produce some sort of more random effects. Neutral tint is the most controllable. It's very flat. Um, what neutral tint does is deepen any colour you add it to. Uh, it's supposed to be very good for botanicals so that you can use a yellow for your leaf or your petal rather. And then you can just deepen that yellow, make it darker, more shadowy without changing the tone of the yellow just by adding neutral tint. Payne's Grey is a lovely, most usually used, I think, as a pre as a premixed colour. It's often quite granulating. It is as granulating, but it's just not obvious because of how heavily granulating Moon Glow is. And then uh, finally, Jane's Grey is lovely because you normally have something like a burnt sienna and something like a French, an ultramarine or French ultramarine in your palette. So you can always mix something like that. So it's just a good one to know about. So how do I use Moon Glow? Um, for lovely random effects like this. Um, for shadows. So that's why I've, I've got this guy here. All these guys. So we can just show that it creates wonderful shadows. If we give the kind of shapes you'd expect. And then there'd be some shadows up here coming down to the roof, perhaps a little reflection just under the roof. I think this shadow would probably come up a bit higher. But you get the idea that it really does create fascinating shadows. You can use it more, more sort of neat, more intense to create almost blacks if you just want to touching windows like this or make the chimneys really stand out. And then just to risk totally overpainting this scene, it's great for just doing interesting skies, moody skies. So if we just pop that in, you can drop in bits of pigment, touch it in there, you know, watch it separate. Maybe it's a sunrise, so you pop in some warm colours at the bottom and they, they mix together wonderfully or I don't know maybe it's if we just do another quick one so just an area I just have to imagine there's a scene under this maybe it's uh, more of a storm so you you pop in a bit of uh, a fallow blue a bit of a sort of Jane's grey type mixture 
maybe some neutral tone, you know, you get the idea. It's just playing with all these fascinating effects it gives you. And then the last thing, which is always important, is knowing how a colour splashes. And what happens if we take, oh, there's almost none there. So in, there's intense splashes, there's some very watery splashes. Hopefully there's something in between. And then if we just move that away, what happens to the splashes if we spread them? You can really see the blues coming out underneath. And again, it just, it creates really fascinating textures. I think it's just for how it sort of responds to being moved around to water, doing its own thing. It's a really fascinating colour. So I'd re recommend playing around with it using it for shadows and things. Let's see if we can layer it a bit, just to show. There we go, we can layer it up and get these lovely deep areas and vary our shadows on the roof or whatever you want. Anyway, hopefully this page gives you a nice idea of the kind of things this color can do. I will scan it and add it in for you. Um, so for the next sort of 20, 30 seconds, you can see a higher quality image uh, and really pick out these fascinating blues and reds and things. Particularly, I'd suggest focusing on these blocks at the top. I hope that has been interesting to you um, and got you thinking about shadows and textures and granulation and how you can make your watercolours do their work for themselves. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of thing, can you please let me know? A comment would be great. And subscribing, liking to my channel is always a huge support. Thank you very much for watching. And here, as promised, is the scan. And coming up is a couple of sketches which sort of heavily feature a bit of moon glow in the sky. You can really see how it granulates and spreads and makes some interesting shapes. Thanks again for watching.